Hi, this is Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we're going to do a beginner's lesson on cloning. So I'm going to use video footage from my entry into the Production Crate 10 second video contest. Uh, for the month of March 2018. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to see that 10 second video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new composite shot and I'm just going to leave it at 30 seconds and the video matching the timeline. Click OK. And I'm just going to drag in my raw footage number one. And basically it starts off with about five seconds of me just hanging out. I'm going to go to the five second mark and using this slice tool, I'm just going to slice that off. Re-grabbing the selection tool, I'm just going to slide over. And what you can see is, is that I ran off screen, I changed shirts, and then I sat down. And now here I am acting like I am sitting there. Now, I have both of my footages in place. One is sitting on top of the other. And here's a little thing you can do. You can always go back to your composite shot, right click on it, click on properties, and then you can change any of those properties that you originally set up. In this case, I'm just gonna change it to be only five seconds long so that it covers the whole screen. Now, if you'll notice, I have this raw footage of me sitting here in the white shirt. If I make that invisible, then you can see the raw footage of me sitting here in my red shirt, okay? If I turn that back on, then I wanna basically just kinda split screen it. So I'm gonna use my mouse wheel and just slide out a little bit. What I want to do is, if I twirl open the properties of the footage here with me of the white shirt, and I twirl open the transform, look at the opacity. I just draw the opacity down and basically makes it a little bit see-through. So you can kind of see half of this and half of that. But it gives me a good idea of where I'm at and things like that, okay? So now in this white shirt um, clone, I'm going to create a mask. And I'm going to use the rectangular mask tool. And I'm just going to drag this on until it's about halfway in between the two characters here. Okay. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and up that back to 100%. Okay. And now I have my clone shot. But you'll notice there's a problem. And the problem is, is that I have this very stark line. Because in the time that it took for me to run off camera and change shirts and then sit here, the lighting in the room changed. Probably the sunlight coming in from this window or something like that. And it's really obvious. So how do you fix that? Well, if you had a stark line in your shot, uh, maybe like this table, could I could have ran it along. But since my hand is there, I can't do that. You could do it that way. But since I can't do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the mask tool. And under shape, I'm just going to increase the feather strength. And I'm just going to drag that. And in this case, I can drag it a lot, almost 100 pixels. And that way, if you look, you can see it sort of blurs it, right? And actually, if I were to remove that second, you can see how much of a blur there is there, okay? It sort of blends it or feathers it from one to the other. And so now I have this really nice clone shot. And you can't even hardly tell that they were actually two different times. So let's do another one. Let's go new composite shot. And I'm going to make it um, 60 seconds long. And I'm going to drag in this raw footage, okay? Now, this is only a two-second shot, so I'm just going to uh, move forward to about two seconds, okay? And then I will use my slice tool and slice that. Grabbing the selection tool, I'm going to drag the other one back. And, re and remember, I ran off the screen and took a whole minute to set myself up in a white shirt. Okay, I'm gonna drag that back. So now that, that composite shot, I'm gonna go ahead and properties and make it only two seconds long. Okay, so there we are. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. The top footage, I'm gonna twirl it open, transform, and I'm just going to draw the opacity down enough so that I can see both of us, okay? And you can see, but that's not exactly a rectangular deal. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm using my mouse wheel to pull out a little bit. And this time, instead of using a rectangular mask, I'm going to use the freehand mask tool. And this top footage is actually the, uh, looks like the red 
shirt guy. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to start here, down to here, over to here, and then I'm going to cut out the rest of that. Boom. All right. Now I can go ahead and up that back. And you can see, again, I have that stark line. So what will I do? Well, what I will do is under the mask properties shape, I will go ahead and adjust the feather strength until it seems about right. Now I can't go too far because if I go too far, then I might end up with a little bit of, you know, feathering into my glasses. And I may have to move that a little bit just to be sure. And that looks pretty good. So now it's pretty hard to tell that that has been masked into the other shot. But pretty much in a nutshell, that's a beginner's lesson on how to do cloning. This is non-interactive cloning. We're not actually, you know, doing it with each other, integ integrating with each other at this point. But I do have a video on how to do that, and I will leave a link in the description below for that as well. So if you have any questions or feedback, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.